Hi, 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 everybody. So last week I talked about some uh, foraged cactus fruit that I found while I was out in California. Well, this time I've got another cactus fruit that I picked up at a, uh, a supermarket. This guy. And it looks like a prickly pear, like a regular prickly pear that, you know, I've reviewed before in the past. Just a little shittier, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like gray looking, it's got a little purple tinge to it. It's a little like, hmm, I don't know, a little knobbly, but uh, this is actually a different fruit, and I think, like, I mean, I probably have seen this before, even in New York, and just didn't know what it was, because we've got, like, a lot of um, Mexican grocery stores here and stuff like that, where you might be able to find this. Well, uh, it's called Choco Nozle, Choco Nozle, which I am sure I'm saying it wrong. It's spelled with an X, okay? This has a completely different flavor than the prickly pear. It's not sweet, it's supposed to be sour, and people use it for cooking. It's used a lot in different soups and salsas and stuff like that to kind of give a sour element to food. So it's not used how you would use a prickly pear. Um, probably the most common, commonly seen version of this, I guess, I, I, I don't drink, but I've heard that, you know, you make, they make, like, candy out of this, and they'll serve it with, like, margaritas sometimes. It's got, like, a sour, sweet flavor going on. Um, and this comes from the nopal cactus, which people may recognize the, the name nopales, which is for this guy. So it's from, basically, a, a paddle cactus. I don't know if it's specifically this one, but uh, nopales just means like this uh, paddle from a cactus, which is used like a vegetable. It's a little tougher than a uh, regular prickly pear. Yeah, that's kind of hard to cut into. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is a lot different. It's uh, kind of a light color on the outside with a very dark red seed on the inside. Please excuse any noise you're hearing there destroying the apartment next to mine. Like, you don't eat the seeds, you scoop those out and you just eat this part here. Okay, so I just lopped out a little piece of it, so let me try that. That is sour. Like eating, like a green bean or some asparagus or something. It's that kind of like green, vegetably taste but with a, um, a tartness to it. The tartness isn't that strong. It's not like a lemon or anything. It's more like a very tart Granny Smith apple. It's like if you took um, star fruit, a tart apple, and a bland prickly pear, and you mixed them up. That's kind of what you have here. It's a good flavor. And just out of curiosity, I will try those seeds in there, just to see if it tastes like anything. It's probably not going to be, it's just going to be a mouthful of seeds, I think. I don't think it's going to taste like anything. Well, there's no sourness to it. Seeds have a little bit more sweetness to them. But, reminds me a little bit of watermelon. Just like flavorless watermelon, like watermelon rind. Definitely a lot more flavor in the pulp on the outside there. I'm gonna make a uh, salsa that actually has uh, no tomatoes in it. It uses this fruit, chilies, and garlic. It's gonna be mostly this flavor. So we'll see how this goes in uh, a cooking kind of application. I've got uh, five of these and I'm going to put them in the oven to broil. I just put them on a baking sheet with a piece of tin foil so it wouldn't stick. And then it just goes in there and uh, just uh, let it broil and turn it every once in a while with some tongs and you're good to go. It should be about uh, 15 to 25 minutes according to the recipe that I'm using. So while the oven here is uh, doing its thing, I'm going to get the next part of the ingredients ready. So I've got a pan. I'm going to turn it on uh, medium high heat and what goes in here is one garlic clove 
and one chipotle chili. The speed of the process, I'm gonna actually cut this up into little bits with a pair of scissors and just put like the seeds and everything in there and like let this just kind of like roast a little bit. It's been about 20 minutes, so I think it is time. I'm gonna take these guys out. Yeah, that looks good to me. What am I looking for? I don't know, but uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, what you want is like the skin to just kind of like peel away. So they should be kind of like soft. Not like super soft, but like, yeah, you want them to be like kind of like browned on the edges, which they are, and just like softened a bit. So looks like 20 minutes is the way to go for, uh, for me. And these guys here are still cooking. Uh, it's a little bit longer than I expected for these to go, so I'm going to jack up the heat and let this go for another couple minutes. So I gave this a few minutes just to cool down so it's not like searing my fingers. And using a spoon, you just kind of like peel off the skin on the outside. You know, I don't like this. This is what the recipe says. Um, I'm going to actually use a knife. Yeah, that's easier. <laughs> yeah, so we can't, can't trust everything. And uh, yeah, just get rid of all the outer skin. You don't want that. You can also use your fingers to peel it off. That's actually maybe even easier. I'm learning as I go along. Okay, so yeah, peel off all this outer stuff here. I'm trying to like keep as much of the uh, fruit intact just because once you get all the skin off and you scoop the seeds out, there's not a whole lot left. You know, it's not a whole lot of fruit in one of these. So this is probably not going to make a whole lot of salsa, but, you know, it'll give me at least a, an idea of like what it tastes like. Okay, so then you cut it in half like that, and here's where the spoon will be handy. You scoop out those seeds. So you're left with that. Do that with all the rest of them and it's time for the next step. Food processor is here. I'm gonna take my garlic and chipotle's and put those in there, put the seeds in there too. And let this grind for a second. I'm gonna open this up and put in about half of my fruit and okay put in the rest of the fruit and this I'm just going to uh, pulse and finally put a little salt and stir that mother up. And there you go. Not the prettiest salsa in the world, but it, uh, it is there. And you can see there's not a whole lot, just maybe like a, not even a cup, maybe like a half cup, three fourths of a cup of salsa here. So if you're gonna do this, I would recommend uh, doing it with a lot more. I only had five of these fruits. So this is all I could get, but if you took you know, maybe like 10 of them, it would give you like a decent amount for like a party or something. Ooh, yes. All right, so let's give this a shot. I'm kind of excited about this. You know, it's interesting just because it's a salsa that does not have any of the things you really would expect salsa to have. You know, when I make salsa, it is nothing but onions, cilantro, maybe a jalapeno, and a ton of tomatoes, lime juice, you know, this does not have any of that. This is just very, very simple. It is only these cactus fruits, a clove of garlic, salt, and uh, chipotle. So, uh, yeah, curious if you can get, like, all the kind of, like, nuanced flavors you would expect from salsa with just three ingredients. Hmm. Let's, uh, give it a shot. Smells good. It smells very chipotle -y. It kind of, like, incorporate a lot of that flavor in there, apparently. That's pretty good. Um, it's very unique. This was not 
really tastes like regular salsa, but it satisfies that kind of um, desire. Like, if you want salsa, or something like it, you know, but you want to make it like a little bit more different, this would certainly do the trick. The chipotle makes it very smoky. I honestly, if I were to make this again, I'd put a regular jalapeno in there instead of the chipotle. So I think that using a dry chili kind of gives like a little bit of a staleness to it. Um, but what really shines is that fruit. It's quite sour. Um, and actually, I think I don't, I don't really need the salt in this either because the chips have salt on them. And it has so much flavor to it, salt is like kind of unnecessary. Um, does not have a tomato taste. So if you're expecting like that kind of salsa, this does not taste like that. It tastes maybe more like a mango salsa. You know, it still has that, uh, the same kind of flavor that it had before, except maybe it's like a little easier to take. Like the, the texture is better, you know, like it, it works pretty well. But it's a unique flavor, but it's good. You know, if I were to throw like a party, you got your guacamole, you got your salsa, if you want something else, like you have a lot of guests, you want more variety, this would do it. Or if you like Mexican food but you don't like tomatoes or you're allergic to them or something, also like a good uh, substitute. So this is good. It's nice and sour, nice and fruity, nice and flavorful. Uh, roasting it gives it like nice little punch to it. But uh, all together, definitely worth checking out. You know, very interesting for me. And, um, yeah, I don't think I have much more to say about it, so I'm just going to finish eating the rest of this. Alright, thanks so much, guys. Bye! Okay, I only have one minute, so I have to make this fast. Guys, uh, click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Click that bell. I don't know what the bell does, but it probably gives an angel its wings, so click on it. That dislike button, don't click that one. Uh, go to the comments, leave a comment if you have something to say. Go to the description, because in the description there is a link to my Patreon page where you can help contribute to my channel and make it grow. There's also a link to my website where you can see a backlog of videos, more information, and also uh, you can buy a t-shirt at my website now. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to the channel Smarter Every Day. Smarter Every Day is a mega contributor on Patreon. They're really helping me out. If you like what I'm doing with fruit, check out his channel because it basically covers everything involving science. It's really interesting. Also around there, there should be there should be a couple of videos right here. These are the videos to my next week's episode, if it's up, and last week's episode, where you can check that out. I still have three seconds, guys, so thank you so much. Bye-bye.